Welcome back to the Kicks 96.5 Morning Show. We love featuring artists you should know about. And today we're heading to Canada to chat with award-winning singer-songwriter Tegan Littlechief. Tegan's based out of Saskatchewan. She sang the Canadian National Anthem at the 109th Canadian Grey Cup, which is like their Super Bowl. Not in one, not in two, but in three different languages. She's back-to-back SCMA Indigenous Artist of the Year. She just dropped a brand-new single called Need You to Go. We're excited to have Tegan Little Chief on the show. First, Tegan, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, thanks so much for inviting me. Yeah, well, well, happy belated birthday. Last week was your birthday. Did you do anything special? You know what? Um, best birthday ever. I got to just chill out and do absolutely nothing. It was a snow day for work, so it worked. <laughs> wow, perfect. You got to relax, so that's always a yeah, plus. And it, and it was fun. So yeah, well, and you got like she got like over two hundred and eighty messages on one Facebook post, so she got a lot of love uh, on her birthday as well. So that's always nice. You had a number one song in twenty thirteen, so you've been at this for a, for a little while. Tell us, I mean, your mom kind of got you going. How did it all happen? Well, I really got started when I was like very little, like. Um, used to sing uh my play school teacher was the one that told me told my mom to get me into music lessons and then from there i was in uh little music festivals and then radio competitions and then it just kind of flourished from there yeah and she's continued well in 2017 you had a little hiccup you you hit rock bottom Tell, tell us how did you get yourself out of it well I I was an addict for many, many years, and finally I just had enough, and my mom, who was an addictions counselor previously, had all the right hookups to get me into treatment, um, so I went into detox, I went to treatment, I uh, did my 28 days, and then got out, and I've been working on myself since, and... Once I've been able to cut a few negative ties in my life, I was able to jump back in the studio and work with um, songwriter Sean Hogan. So he was the one that kind of got me back out into the music scene. Mm, Nice. Well, and then uh, Heartbreak Song, which we just played, when did you record that? That was actually one of the first... No, the second one I recorded after i got sober so um it was a few years ago actually yeah it's been a while but uh (laughs) great song i loved it It, it, the the reason i wanted to record that one was because i did go through a not so great relationship um and it was and when i we broke up it was kind of i didn't want people to know what i was going through i just you know i didn't want to tell people what happened you know it was just one of those things that i wanted to keep to myself for a while so that i could tell the story later on i just wasn't ready at the time and then when i heard the song i said you know what no better way to tell what i'm feeling than through this song yeah uh go and check her out tegan little chief she's at tegan little chief.com she's on facebook instagram x go to youtube Check out all of her other stuff. Her latest single, Need You to Go, uh, is out now. Well, this anthem, when did you start singing the anthem? How did this happen? (laughs) So I started singing the anthem um, for, oh gosh, uh, 2010, 2011. I started singing with um, the Regina Pats, um, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and then... Oh, when was this? A couple years ago, they, a few weeks before Grey Cup, or a few months before Grey Cup, the 109th Grey Cup, they had asked if I wanted to do the national anthem. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I really want to. So they said, okay, can you do it in French? I was like, yeah. I mean, I, I learned a little French in high school. I mean, I have friends that speak French. So honestly, I've never spoken. I don't speak my language Cree fluently, nor do I speak French fluently. And um, so I ended up learning French and Cree all within a month before Grey Cup. And they didn't throw the whole Cree um, aspect at me until two weeks before. (laughs) 
Wow. So I was I was learning two languages at once, and it was kind of a it was it was kind of fun because I mean moments before having to sing the national anthem live in three different languages, I had one lady come up to me and she says, two hours, two hours before, she says, Tegan, I need you to enunciate this, this, and this, and this, and this in French. And I'm like, oh boy, okay, I got this, I got this. So it was, it was, it was nerve wracking, but exciting at the same time. Well, yeah, I mean, doing the anthem is nerve wracking enough let alone doing it in three different languages at the same time. I mean, how how did you intertwine it, or how did you know which way to do this? Because, I mean, you're doing it in the three languages when you're doing the anthem. It was a big guessing game, um, but I ended up finding things that just kind of intertwined with each other and just went from there. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's amazing. If you go to YouTube or, or anywhere, even on X, and type in the anthem, and Tegan Little Chief, and it'll come up. I mean, the place is packed. You're standing out in the middle of the stadium. I mean, yeah, was it more nerves? Was what was going through your head? It was. It was nerves. Um, you know, I mean, in any moment like that for anybody, especially when you're just like kind of breaking back out into a, the music scene, and you're hit with three different languages it, 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 the pressure is on and it's kind of like a, oh my gosh what did I get myself into like wow oh my gosh kind of like that but you know it, I love the crowd the crowd was amazing um, you know they jumped in and they helped and it was it was great yeah it, it looked amazing and then when you're done and the flyover was it like the relief just spewed out of you when it was finally over yeah I started like Shaking. So I have this thing. I have my son is my focal point. He, I only have one child. He's my he's my person. So once I seen him in the on the sideline there, I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then when I walk off, he's like, oh my gosh, mom, you did so great. I'm like, I'm so glad it's done. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, the relief. You probably just the weight of the world was off your shoulders once it was done. And, and then to, then the flyover. The fly, seeing a flyover when you're in a stadium is cool enough. But after you got done with that, that had to just probably just be the cherry on top when the flyover. <laughs> it happened. sounds cool too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it sounds amazing. Well, Tegan, you mentioned it kind of getting back into music. Yeah, what's it been the last two years? Is the focus been back on music? What was it? Yes, the so I did when I was going through my active addiction and then going through my whole sobriety. I ended up really taking a strong hiatus from music. I, I did it here and there, but not to the extent of recording and releasing and doing live shows or playing with a band. I um, in the last couple years, uh, three few three years, last three years, I've really dug my heels into the music scene and started learning, relearning. You know, things have changed in ten years. Oh, yeah. So it was kind of trying to put things back together and, you know, trying to solve this puzzle that is constantly changing. But at the same time, it was kind of like a, I love the learning experience. <laughs> I mean, I didn't realize how much social media I needed until I got back into it, like the last couple of years. Yeah, social media is huge and, and you need help because you can't do it all yourself. Uh, and and yeah. she's, she's got a little bit of help. Uh, helping oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, which is good. Oh. What's this? Yeah. You're a national cast member for the Saskatchewan Telemiracle. Yeah. Uh, so my, I got a call one day, uh, and they asked if I could take a Zoom call, and I'm like, sure, why not? Um, and they just tell me like, hey, how would you feel about being a cast member for Telemiracle? I'm like, I've always wanted to do that. Like I've always wanted to be the one, one of the ones chanting, ring those phones to raise money for people. And I'm just like, I was so excited. It was this, like this amazing opportunity. And I had no idea why they were calling. Well, that's cool though. So what do you do? You guys go around and raise money or you go and perform or? We go and we like, we raise money. So like February 9th, I'm going to be having a fundraiser myself in my home community and I will be taking the money raised from here and taking it to Telemiracle so that 
you know, I can contribute somewhat. And um, other things that we do is we, we're we raising money for those that need it. If for, you know, whatever, it's hospital stays or, you know, their family member needs a machine. Like, it's just things like that. Okay. So all kinds of stuff. But, yeah, the Saskatchewan Till a Miracle. Uh, go and check them out. Go check her out. Tegan Little Chief. She's at TeganLittleChief.com. She's on Facebook, Instagram. Go to YouTube. Check out all of her stuff. Need You to Go is her latest single that's out now. Well, I mean, you're part of the Cree Nation. I think you've been like three-time Indigenous Artist of the Year. You've won it the past two years. How special is that to win that? It's it's an amazing feeling. <laughs> you know, the first time I won, I was actually, we got snowed in. We got hit with a crazy heavy snow that power was out and everything and I was home in my bed and they were doing a live presentation on online so I was sitting there and you know my son and his friend were in the other room and they just hear me yelling and they come in they're like oh my god my mom won my mom won I'm just like oh my god this is so cool can't even celebrate till our driveways cleared out <laughs> We have no food to celebrate with. I mean, it was it was so cool, though. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I guess I guess we're going to be snowed in. You might as well win an award, man. <laughs> uh, you guys sound like you're in Wyoming with all the snow and weather uh, you're getting in Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's it, it's a mixture of everything. You know, we get summer, spring, fall, and winter all in a week. So yeah, uh, sounds like the same thing here. Well, what's with your tattoos? It seems like your tattoos are growing the last couple of years. <laughs> I I go to like I go to counseling, but I find personally I love pain therapy, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have to go like I'm I'm due <laughs> for something else. But I, I just love the designs and all my everything that I have on me represents something. Um, you know, there's one that. Typical music, a music tattoo. Then I have one on my hand that says love, and that's because I put it towards my past relationships. And the rest of them are all, you know, my grandparents or me and my son or, you know, like um, mental health. Like, just things like that. Yeah, well, that, that's good. Well, like you said, you don't have anything to fall back on. You can't go to booze or drugs, so you need a little pain. Little tattoo yeah. <laughs> action to, to keep you where you need to be. But hey, well, whatever it takes, I guess. That, that, that's for sure. Well, and your new song, Need You to Go, when you listen to this thing, I mean, obviously talks about your struggles. It, it's you were, you were inspired by your son about this song. Tell us the story behind this. So, Need You to Go was, you know, my son, he, um, he like I say, he's my main, he's my person, he's everything to me. And I've been in a couple bad relationships, um, you know, abusive, you know, just things like that. And I noticed the one day that my son, he was sitting in the back seat and he used to always give me this look of, you know, everything is okay. I look at him the one day and he couldn't look me in the eye. He would never tell me what was wrong. And I said, you know what, how about you tell mom what you're feeling? Because maybe I'm feeling the same way. I, I don't know because I, I can't read your mind. So he just looks at me and he says, Mom, I'm not happy. And I know you're not happy. And then, like, tears fall. And I'm just like, you know what? Mom feels the same way. I'm not happy. So I was like, go in your room. Put your headphones on. I'm going to have a conversation with my partner at the time. And, you know, and then when things were done and said, I was like, I packed his stuff. And I said, you need to leave. It's we're done. We, we can't do this anymore. And, you know, I was like, nobody's happy in this relationship. So, and I'd rather make my son happy and myself happy rather than staying and being miserable. Yeah. And, and there you go. And you got a song out of it. So even better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're performing at the, uh, what is it, the Regina Pats? Is yeah. this is this Canadian football then? No, it's Canadian. Uh, it's um, hockey. Oh, it's hockey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the Pats are taking on the Red Deer uh, coming up Sunday, February 4th. You're doing the anthem there at the Brandt Center. 
uh, in Saskatchewan. So you're doing hockey, football, you're doing everything. Yeah, you know, I my, my kid plays sports, so I mean, why not learn a little bit about sports and what a better way than to sing the anthem and watch the game after. Yeah, for sure. What's more nerve-wracking, performing live with your own stuff or singing the Canadian National Anthem? Oh, I never thought of that. I think performing my own stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You know, well, and, you know, but when you say, when you ask me what is more nerve-wracking, I think it's performing my own stuff in front of a very small room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's kind of like a, oh, my gosh, like, I feel all these little eyes on me right now, and it's like, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm doing a good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, the anthem, everyone's kind of away from you. Yeah, like you can't see their faces. Yeah, everyone's away from you. It's like a minute, you know, minute and a half. Get in there, knock her out, and you're done. <laughs> well, the new song, it's start of a new year. What What are we hoping for this year, Tegan? You know what? More live performances. I would love to hear from anybody. Like, if they were to jump on my socials and let me know where they wanted to see me perform, I would do everything in my power to get there. I will talk with my amazing manager, Pinky, and uh, Black Mountain Music and Media and see where we can go. Um, and they can hear new music coming out, at least a few more coming out this year. Yeah. Lots more to come from Tegan Little Chief. And you're a rocker, Tegan. You're an ACDC fan. Of course. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> How can you not be? Right. I mean, well, that's that's the funny thing, though, is like I grew up with rock and roll. I never I never knew what country was up until I was 13. Um, uh, rock and roll, you know, I was always like Bon Jovi, everybody. Yeah. Um, Tina Turner. You know, there was there was just so many. I was Elvis um, and then Celine Dion, Whitney Houston. But I never knew country until I was 13. And then when I, I heard country, I'm like, oh, this is going to take some getting used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've adapted very well. So well, thank you. <laughs> you're doing good. Well, here it is. Tegan Little Chief. Here's a brand new song. Need you to go. Go and check her out. TeganLittleChief.com. Go and follow her. Lots of things happening in the year 2024. Tegan, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks. Here she is. Need you to go. Kick 96.5.